I'd like to open the, uh, our discussion to the floor for questions, but I guess uh, while we prepare for that, just one last question to, to Ibu Marie. Can you enlighten us? There's, there's the you know, RCEP, there was a TPP, and I guess now no longer. Um, the Prime Minister mentioned the AIB. Uh, how, how, do we, what, how do we understand all these different pathways, and, and what should be ASEAN's approach? Uh, I think ASEAN should uh, see it as, uh, you know, the way that we would like to expand and consolidate the economic integration in, in Asia, uh, and that it should be an example of uh, openness and open regionalism in today's uh, rather gloomy uh, context. Because I think, I think the prediction uh, is that uh, TPP is kind of on the back burner. Uh, and that the U.S. is going to adopt a bilateral negotiating model. Yeah? And, and that's, that's not so good for us in Asia because it, it, it means that you're negotiating with a very strong partner. Whereas in the Asian model, it's, it's kind of more the consensus building and, and, and the stage-by-stage -stage, uh, progression. So I think uh, the, what's happening with AI, RCEP, for those of you who don't understand what RCEP is, it's basically expanding the ASEAN economic community agreement with the plus one, we have six FTAs with the six major partners, which is China, Korea, Japan, India, Australia, and New Zealand. So you're expanding, uh, but it's open regionalism, by the way. So if the US at any time would like to join, of course, uh, at, on the terms of RCEP, it can, right? Uh, and Theoretically I, <laughs> or real? Real, real. It, it, there's a clause in there about open uh, opening to other members, right? Uh, and I think uh, the, a, the, the AIIB and the Belt and the Road are very interesting initiative to actually address the divide, yeah? the, the different levels of development that exist uh, in ASEAN as well as between ASEAN and these other countries uh, through infrastructure building, through capacity building, through people-to-people -people connection. Uh, so I think it, it's a good balance uh, if it can really be made to work. So I think there's still a lot of question out there how this is going to be implemented. But I think as ASEAN, we should be proactive to make sure that it's going to benefit ASEAN. Yeah. You know, that uh, connectivity, I think both prime ministers mentioned connectivity. Uh, connectivity to me is about infrastructure, it's about the digital infrastructure, and it is about the education and the people-to-people -people platform. And I think uh, a lot of that can be, can be facilitated by, by such initiatives such as AIAB and Belt and Road. Thank you. Uh, any questions from the floor? John, while you're waiting, might I just say uh, one or two things um, in response to what the Prime Minister said. I think that um, in Europe and North America, everyone would be delighted if there were an Asian solution to the Asian uh, security dilemmas, of which there are uh, very many. Um, and the United States in particular has been very keen you know, not to take a position uh, on the territorial disputes uh, in the South China Sea. Uh, but there are claimant states amongst ASEAN. There are disputants. And it was, after all, uh, an ASEAN state that took uh, the question of the South China Sea to the International Tribunal. That wasn't an initiative uh, of the United States, but of an ASEAN member state that wanted an international legal ruling uh, on uh, this question. The second point I would make was that I think it's important to recognize that whatever uh, the flaws of Obama's pivot then rebalanced to Asia, it wasn't just a rebalance to Asia, but it was a rebalance within Asia. That during the Obama administration, the United States made a great effort to diversify its relationship uh, with Asia-Pacific countries, including all the countries represented here that previously perhaps did not have such strong relations uh, with uh, the United States. And looking at the other two big geostrategically significant areas of the world, the Middle East and Europe, the inhabitants of the Middle East and Europe have traditionally had two separate concerns about uh, the United States. Either the United States pays too much attention to the region or that it pays too little attention to the region. Mm. Uh, and beware of what you wish for, because if the United States were to pay a lot less attention uh, to the Asia Pacific, my judgment is that the Asia Pacific might be in a more unstable situation. So a bit more continuity uh, is, I'm sure, what ASEAN leaders as a whole might wish for. It's a good point. Yeah. Um, any questions well, before? Uh, but uh, there is a question. I would like to uh, uh, highlight a bit 
uh, John, he uh, mentioned that the uh, the the rule of ancient thought is uh, the what a member of ASEAN. But me as a member of ASEAN and the other nine ASEAN, as I feel, there is no other country allowed to came to the international court. I would like to stress that it's not uh, what the members of ASEAN will like. The one who complained is Philippines alone. And now, the new uh, president of Philippines visit China and did not uh, bring the verdict to discuss with China. So it then came out to, in uh, this, uh, the verdict has no uh, value at all. I would like to stress that is not what ASEAN won. I object at this time before the verdict issue because it's a collusion, the bad collusion on, in the international collusion. Why they know uh, two months beforehand, they know about the verdict, they lobby me to support the verdict. That is a problem. And that I object with the statement of ASEAN supporting the verdict, leaving China and Philippines a whole discussion by later discussion. Thank you.